A major fire has broken out in an apartment block in Hong Kong in China, and it had destroyed seven buildings pretty much out of an eight block complex. So the big question is who started this fire? And how did this out of control fire spread rapidly up individual buildings? And then how did it get into buildings next to those buildings? And how did it set seven buildings on fire? We're going to look at several videos and we're going to look at a number of photographs and we're going to determine what exactly happened here, folks. And we want to get to the bottom of this one because dozens and dozens of people were killed. I think over 85 people were killed as of the time that we are uploading this video. So here's where the apartment complex is located. It's in Hong Kong. It's a beautiful area right near the, the water. What a great view they must have had. So this is right here, the Wang Fu Court block of eight buildings in these apartments. And you can see how they look right there. Now, this is not how they looked before the fire started. They were all covered with green, and I'll show you in a second. But this right here is in the Tai Po section of Hong Kong. This is what the 31-story buildings looked like before the fire. So you had your bamboo scaffolding going all the way up to the top, and then you had that green protective fabric, which is ironic because the same fabric that is supposed to protect you turned out to be the fuel for the fire. And this is an exemplar representation of what it might typically look like with buildings wrapped in protective fabric. Okay, so we have this eyewitness video here. And if this is indeed of that building, you can see the flames at the bottom of the building. So something definitely started there on the first floor. And it looks like it's quickly catching the green tarpaulin material on fire. And so, see, there's a fire that looks like it's at a doorway or something there. But see, you can see a lot of that bamboo scaffolding there. But just look how fast the flames are just leaping up on the outside of this building there. So we're going to watch it here and just... You can see that the buildings actually stood no chance at all. This looks like you got first firemen showing up here right now on the scene. And they're probably not equipped to deal with this because it'll be out of control before they know it. So look, now it's already leaped up in just a few seconds we've been talking. Look at this. Probably up about 100 feet already, at least 10 stories from the bottom of this building. So this, you're seeing firsthand, folks, just how rapidly a fire like this can spread. And that's why, like, if you're ever in a tall building and you even smell smoke, you, you should just get out now. And I would even say, even if they say stay still, because I think this happened also in the Greenfell apartment building up in London when that fire broke out. And look how many people got trapped up there and died in that building. But anyway, coming back here to this one here in Hong Kong, so you can see the bamboo scaffolding it goes all the way up to the top of these 31, 32-story buildings. So see how the burning debris is starting to fall now. Some of the bamboo is burning loose and coming apart. Now, what I think what's really causing most of this bamboo to drop at this point is the fact that the ties are burning off. The bamboos, if you look, they're coming down pretty much intact. And the bamboo isn't burning so much as the green material is, the tarpaulin material which is obviously not flame retardant. And you can see just more and more of the bamboo scaffolding is now coming down. And then as we look at how the fire spread from one building to the next, look at the buildings that still have the green net on them. It looks like some of the windows are still covered with, I believe they were talking about that foam stuff, and they were wondering if that helped contribute too, but they don't look scorched. All right, so a couple of things you're probably wondering here are, one, I mean, how did the fire start in the first place? And then, how did it seem to spread so unbelievably fast like that? And then even more questionably here is, how did the fire spread from one building here, skip a building and go over to another building, two buildings over, and then start a fire over there? So let's take a look. So I made this slide here for you to demonstrate like how this could have happened. And so what I showed you earlier on that uh, video just a few seconds ago was how the fire looked like it started at the bottom here and worked its way up to the top. So this is what we call an external facade chimney effect because it happens outside of the building externally. So this occurs when heat rises between the building's exterior wall here and this netting that you have wrapped all the way around the scaffolding all the way up. Because what you really have here is uh, it's functioning like 
kind of like an external chimney. And so the netting sort of acts like a, a semi-permeous wall for your chimney. And so what happens here is the flames rise upward at an extreme speed up inside this channel. And uh, often what happens is burning and melting stuff up top here, you can see these giant embers, they start come flowing down, as you can see here in some of these videos that were taken from different angles of the fire and how the embers and everything just kept floating everywhere and dropping everywhere. And then on top of that, you have heat breaks here where some of these windows are. And what happens is the extreme heat actually bursts through the windows and then you have a fire inside the apartments. And that's how an entire building can get completely gutted just from something that looks like it's on the outside of the building. That's why anytime you see smoke of any kind, get out of the building because the smoke can run up channels it can run up in it could break into an apartment and go out through the doors and into the halls it can get into elevator shafts and up stairwells and if it's something that's toxic you'll die just trying to get down the stairs so you have fires that exit in one window up here they exit out another window up top and it's just amazing how random it can go here and so this is extremely uh, similar i think to that 2017 Greenfell fire that I showed you before, where it was the cladding that caught fire. And I actually am thinking of doing a video on that. A number of people have asked me about that. And I want to buy some of the materials used in that cladding on the Grenfell Tower and do some fire tests on camera, live, you know, live on camera to show you what exactly happened. And also the 2005 Madrid Windsor Tower fire had a similar type thing too. You had an open facade on the outside. So the other thing you have is, is the stack effect. So in addition to the fire zooming up the outside of the building like a chimney here, just races up to the top, you have, once the fires break into these glass windows, now you've got them going inside and then racing up elevator shafts and racing up uh, stairwells if any of the doors were left open. So this stack effect inside the building creates basically the same type of chimney effect that you saw outside, but it brings it inside the building. By the way, the fire's ability to get through these windows here, this is what I showed you in my video on the Pacific Palisades fire. And so I'll put a link to that in the video description below for you. If you didn't see my video from earlier this year on that massive Pacific Palisades fire that destroyed homes and why certain homes survived and certain homes didn't survive and why the fire skipped over one or two homes but burnt all the other homes in the neighborhood, I will show you in that video what happened. So I'll put a link to that in the video description below for you. So how did the fire start? Well, this is one way it could start. This video was going somewhat viral around it, so I don't know if this occurred at this construction site or if it was somewhere else but certainly nobody should be sitting there smoking right against all of this flammable material there so it could have started from somebody smoking it could have started from somebody welding too close to the material it could have even started in somebody's apartment and worked its way outdoors but one thing we know for sure is that this fire most likely started right there at the ground level and then you can see here how it just quickly shot itself all the way up to the top using that external chimney effect. Now we always talk about the human toll, but don't forget these 4,000 residents had a lot of pets too. And so thankfully they were able to rescue some of the pets as you can see here. And a bunch of cats they rescued, they had to pile them just in these large cages just to get them out of there. So some of these rescued pets, as you can see here, were brought in and triaged and checked out, make sure they were okay cleaned up if they needed oxygen they gave them oxygen but it was good to see that they were rescuing the pets as well and then as we look at this other video another obvious question is how did the fire leap from one building to another seemingly skipping buildings in between well there's your answer right there because it erupts like a volcano once that chimney effect sends all those flames up to the roof and all the embers start coming down and they land on the other buildings and this catches those buildings on fire. And then those flame up to the top and it just starts the cycle all over till you run out of buildings at the end of the row. Now here's some drone video that shows what it looked like the next morning. So the fires are mostly under control and it almost looks like those hoses would be completely helpless against this fire. So then as we pan back here, you can just see the enormity of this massive fire and how they're lucky that some of the other structures even across the street 
were unaffected because part of the problem it was the green fabric that really shot up and it was the chimney effect that allowed that fire to spread to more of the green fabric because it is so flammable it was easy to catch fire at all stages all the way across to the top of the building but look how mostly much of the bamboo scaffolding even though this one here came down on a lot of the buildings you'll see a large sections of the bamboo scaffolding is still miraculously in place and never came down and you'll see a timestamp appear on the screen here and i believe that means 302 p.m and if that's correct that means you're basically only 10 minutes into the fire at that point which just shows how rapidly it spread and you can see the heat it broke through windows and it got into apartments and there you are almost an hour later and here's another video that has a much clearer view where you can see i mean look 30 stories worth of bamboo scaffolding sort of withstood its spot there, except for those areas in the corner where you had that chimney effect of all of that super high heat and rapidly moving flame like a giant torch shooting up to the top of the building. So, yes, this bamboo was certainly much more resilient than people think. And I think at the beginning, a lot of news agencies were starting to blame the, the bamboo when really the bamboo was really more or less uh, a victim of circumstance here because likely the ties burnt off. But look at this. In, in areas where these buildings have burnt from the bottom to the top, you can see here mostly the bamboo is intact. And this scene right here reminds me of something right out of the towering inferno. And so here you can see close-ups. Look how mostly the bamboo scaffolding held in place. It took a lot, really, to burn through those bamboo scaffolds. So they will be looking at whether or not to continue using bamboo for sure after this anyway. And then this scene right here shows, again, you know, how the power of those flames shooting up from the ground level. I feel bad for the firemen. They must feel completely helpless. And, of course, the Chinese are looking at other technologies, too, like these droids that you see right there. Look at that. Shooting those hoses right into the fire there. So this could be the firefighting of the future for us. Now, the building department does have in place here this code of practice for fire safety in buildings. And specifically here, Clause F5.6 here on page 178, right here, it says, Flame retardant sheetings should be used for covering the scaffoldings erected around the building. Now, how many of you own pop-up tents? I know I have two of them myself. And have you ever erected these pop-up tents like out at a camping event or a sporting event or something? You look for that little white tag that looks like the tag you see on your mattresses, right? That tag will tell you what fire prevention codes that your tent conforms to because even those have to be fireproof here in the united states but over in hong kong as we've seen before with other chinese contractors and and engineers and stuff they tend to bypass the rules quite a bit here and when you don't think that the rules apply to you this is what happens okay so in hong kong the building department has this guidelines on the design and construction of bamboo scaffolds. And so you can bet the investigators are going to be checking through these specs and making sure that these guys were compliant to all of these specs. And one in particular here I'm looking at here is, is that 1.5. All knots should be tightened with at least five rounds of nylon strips. So were there five rounds? Because some of those scaffolds look like they came down just too quickly. Or did those nylon strips just melt right through or burn right through? Would they have been better with like some other type of twisty ties? I don't know. So they have an entire spec here that they'll go through that, that shows them how they're supposed to be building these scaffolds. And they're going to determine whether the scaffolds were built according to building codes. And we all know over there that a lot of these contractors like to circumvent these building codes, which are very exact in nature in the way things should be built. And if you don't adhere to them, you're going to run into trouble. And so this is why they arrested three people for negligence. And you can bet there's probably going to be more arrests. Because look, folks, we don't ever want to see anything like this happen ever again. We thought that they would have learned from the Greenfell Tower in London back in 2017. Well, make sure you check out these other two videos over here, too. And thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see all of you 
on the next one.